I will make you suffer pain so unimaginable. You will wiggle and beg and pray for the gift of death. By now, we all know that action film superstar Liam Neeson has a very particular set of skills. But did you know he also owns a very particular set of homes in North America that he's bought over the course of his one-of-a-kind movie career? That's right, this Irish-born actor has primarily called the US home over the past two decades as he's continued to star in banger after banger after banger. Sorry, wrong Irish guy. Banger after banger after banger! After banger. But let's not waste any more time because we're here to check out all of Liam Neeson's US addresses. And we're gonna start with his former bungalow in LA. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you wanna see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. Liam first moved to Los Angeles in the late 80s to kickstart his film career. Having already established himself across the pond in the UK, Liam believed that it was time to carve out his own little corner of Hollywood. And to do so, he wound up securing a three bedroom bungalow to operate as his home base that was originally built in the 1950s. Considering he both bought and sold this place nearly three decades ago, not much is known about this 1400 square foot house. But it is said to have boasted an L-shaped swimming pool and was once even owned by the late actor Scott Brady before Liam moved in. But sometime around 1994, shortly after being nominated for an Academy Award for his work in Steven Spielberg's Schindler's List, Liam would decide, well, that he had had enough of living in Hollywood. He was quoted telling the LA Times, I still get a kick out of waking up in Los Angeles, the sunshine, you know, but I don't think I'll stay there too much longer. And as a matter of fact, he didn't. Having just recently entered into a relationship with the woman who would become his wife, Natasha Richardson, these two decided to move east and after selling Liam's original LA home for about $439,000, they then bought themselves a Central Park West apartment in New York City. A notoriously private individual, Liam would never show off the inside of this penthouse suite, but reports suggest that he spent at least $1.4 million on it or you know, almost triple what he sold his California house for. It's also unclear how much time Liam or Natasha spent here. After a little over 15 years of ownership, Liam would list this apartment in 2010 for $1.35 million, describing the home as a corner unit with two bedrooms, two bathrooms, beamed ceilings, and having lots of closet space in a full service building with its own gym. The listing would be earmarked as quote unquote price to sell and there's really no denying that. After all, Liam was asking for less than he originally paid for it some 16 years earlier. It only took Liam five days to find a motivated buyer. Big surprise with a one of a kind deal like that. And afterwards, Liam would retire to his epic Millbrook, New York estate. Purchased within a year of his New York apartment, Liam and his wife Natasha were also the proud owners of a 37 acre estate located just outside of Millbrook New York. First built in 1890, this home was purchased by the happy couple prior to getting hitched. And soon after, they'd hold their marriage ceremony in the garden here. Following their wedding, the couple's two sons would arrive soon after as Liam and his growing family began to fill up as much of the sprawling 34,000 square foot farmhouse estate as they possibly could. Well, the centerpiece of this home is Liam's colonial style mansion, a structure that takes up nearly 6,000 square feet all by itself. This house not only offers plenty of space, but each bedroom is said to be equipped with its own adjoining bathroom, along with a host of other add-ons. But let's start with the outside. Here, you'll find a spectacular greenhouse on site, which is right beside the garden where Liam and Natasha exchange their vows. Out back, peace and tranquility are never far off thanks to the lake located right on site. The nearby grounds are also set to house an international sized tennis court, as well as a gigantic outdoor patio that's perfect for hosting a ton of famous friends. Moving to the inside, I'm sure you'll be quite 
taken by Liam's interiors. I'm sorry, I had to. Not only are there countless conversation pieces scattered around an incredible living room, but there's also a gorgeous grand staircase nearby that adorns the inside foyer with its equally elegant chandelier hanging from the ceiling above. A short walk from there is the breakfast nook with its very own fireplace, and if you're looking to add a little more class to your dining experience, well, you can head on over to the dining room that's fit for a king. This is where Liam and Natasha used to love throwing epic dinner parties. A former co-worker on Liam's films would tell Men's Journal, they had a lovely house with a chef and every weekend they would invite six members of the crew and cook this fantastic dinner with beautiful wines. It was just the most lovely treat. Over in the master suite, it's not only quite spacious, it also features a windowsill bench and a fireplace that's sure to set the mood on those cold New York winter nights. The estate is said to boast other amenities like a massage parlor for relaxing after a long day of filming, an indoor golf simulator, a massive wine cellar, a luxurious indoor pool, and even a custom movie theater. In fact, outside of the main house, the property has two antique barns located on site, one of which has been totally renovated to serve as an entertainment area, which houses the theater, alongside a billiards room and a state-of-the-art fitness center to keep Liam looking his best well into his 70s. Liam and Natasha used to love to spend a bunch of their free time in their home theater watching movies together while enjoying one another's company. Unfortunately, after 15 years of marital bliss, that would come to a crashing halt. In March of 2009, tragedy would strike Liam and his family when his wife Natasha found herself in a fatal accident while visiting Quebec's Mont Tremblant Ski Resort. After falling on the beginner's slopes while taking a ski lesson and hitting her head, Natasha originally appeared to be fine. She even remained adamant that she was alright and refused to stay under watch. She checked herself out of the doctors by signing a waiver and walked 300 yards to the hotel along with her ski instructor. When she finally got back to her room, it wasn't long before paramedics received a second phone call asking for help. An ambulance arrived 10 minutes later. During this period, Natasha was still conscious, but showing warning signs of serious trauma. She was transported to a hospital in Montreal before then being airlifted to New York City's Lenox Hill Hospital, where Liam was already rushing to her side. Unfortunately, the worst came to pass. Natasha would die a few days later from an epidural hematoma due to blunt impact to her head. She was only 45 years old. Officially, Natasha was taken off of life support as she and Liam had once made a pact, promising one another they wouldn't let each other suffer. Liam explained to CBS News, She and I had a made a pact. If any of us got into a vegetative state, we'd pull the plug. My immediate thought was, okay, these tubes have to go, she's gone. Five years later, Liam would reveal that Natasha's death wound up saving the lives of three other individuals, who received donations of her working organs, including her heart, heart, liver, and kidneys. Of course, Liam still misses her every single day. In fact, he continues to live in their former New York estate because of how much it reminds him of her. He continued to CBS News. There's periods now in our New York residence when I hear the door opening, especially the first couple of years. Anytime I hear the door opening, I still think I'm going to hear her. Liam's beloved wife was then laid to rest and buried right nearby the property so that Liam can visit her whenever he wants. Kind of a heartbreaking ending, right? For now, however, However, that's going to bring Liam Neeson's house tour to a close. But before I sign off, I just want to ask you this one question. Would you prefer to live in a home you once shared with a departed spouse for the rest of your life or find a fresh start somewhere new? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below as well as what you like best about Liam's homes. Otherwise, like, subscribe and turn on your notifications to ensure you never miss a new tour. My name is Kara, follow me on Instagram to chat more and I'll see you all in another video. Bye!